and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host, and this month is February, and I am talking all about how isolation keeps us from achieving our goals. I'm speaking from my heart because I know personally how too much isolation keeps me positively paralyzed. Today, I'm interviewing life coach and personal development expert, Sharman Wengender. Sharm and I know each other from years ago when she married a dear college friend of mine, and I've watched her change her life over the years. First, she left her nursing job to become a mom to three girls. Next, she wanted more for herself and got her yoga teaching certification. After that, she wanted to create even more impact in the world, so she became a life coach. Sharman's one of those electric women who makes you feel good just by being around her. Our conversation lit me up and gave me energy, and that's what connection does. Today, she shares valuable strategies about how you can get more out of what you want in your life and how connecting with yourself will get you there. Not sure how to do that? Well, that's why I have this podcast. Listen in and learn some new ways of thinking that'll move you toward action. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. If you've been following along, you know that I have been interviewing entrepreneurial men and women who have made giant leaps in their lives to do something that they love and to make the world a better place. Today, I'm introducing you to an old friend of mine, Sharman Wengender, who is a sparkly, amazing personality. She is a life coach. She is a motivational speaker. She is a health and wellness expert. And she she is the host of her own radio show. So Sharman is here today to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about how she came to be doing what she's doing and became the personal development expert that she is. And also, she's going to talk about her specialty, which is life coaching uh, adults, teens, couples, children, she does it all. So thank you so much, Sharon, for being here today. So Well, first of all, thanks for having me, my my beautiful friend. And you too are on a path. This trajectory for you has been amazing to watch. Very similar paths for you and I. So, and who would have thought back when we met, right? I know. Just interesting how our careers went in, you know, polar opposites at one point, me a nurse Mm -hmm. and and you a teacher at that Mm -hmm. point, right? Yes. And here we are. And our work is very similar in this world. And I love it. And I love that it brought us yeah. back together. I know. So, I, know. I feel so lucky that. to be having this conversation. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey, where you were, to how you got to where you are now? Sure. My story is long, but I will, <laughs> um, I'll try to summarize it because basically I feel like it was, it was all very connected. Um, so I'm a nurse. And when I was in nursing school, I wanted to study holistic nursing. And that was based on a little scenario that happened one day with a client or, or patient rather. Um, he had AIDS. This was back when we were still very afraid of AIDS. We were afraid to be near patients. I was a nursing student full of fear and anxiety. And I had been given this chart and I thought, how in the hell am I going to do this? They're testing me, but nurses, they're young, right? So it's like the fit survive. And I went in there headstrong and I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I went in and the first thing I saw were the eyes of this patient Mm -hmm. and they were full of loneliness and despair. Mm -hmm. And I'd never seen anything like it. And in that moment, I forgot that I was afraid. And I went in there and I introduced myself and I found myself trying to figure out what he needed. Mm -hmm. And I could tell right away it's he needed connection. I was, yeah, I was just going to say ah, he needed connection. Yeah. Right? This okay. is not intentionally bringing us to our subject matter, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. We can put a pin in that. So, um, yeah, so I held his hand and, um, and I shaved him. I bathed him. I, I did all these things that, in theory, I thought I'd never get through. And I never even felt any nerves uh, while I was with him. 
In fact, um, I lost track of time. And I realized, because nurses eat their young, you cannot be running late. So I realized I had to go. Um, but he was holding my hand and I thanked him because it had really been a profound experience for me. And um, I said, thank you so much. This was wonderful. And he wouldn't let my hand go. And he said, no, thank you for making me feel like a human being. <laughs> and there defined Charmin's career path <laughs> because I'm just a nursing student at this point, right? And then I realized mind, body, spirit, is so connected and that there would be no way in hell this man was going to get well if his emotional needs were not tended to. So physically he was getting everything he needed, but he was lonely and in despair and it was palpable. And I knew that one could not exist without the other. Mm -hmm. Now at this time, holistic nursing was woo woo, new age. Yeah. I was going to say, what year are we talking here? So I graduated in 98. This was 95. Okay. Yep. So I was 95, uh, early 96, even maybe. I can't remember which. So I went to my preceptor and I said, um, I really want to pursue this. And she said, Charmin, there is no one doing this. You're going to have a hard time coming up with a clinical. She said, you know something? She was um, working at Brigham and Women's, which I think most people know that Boston Hospital. Um, she said, I've got a friend who is doing skin to skin care at Brigham's and um, which is out there, right? This is so that the, the mom and the baby in the NICU, oh, yes. their heart rates um, and their vital signs will basically co-regulate with each other by by having the skin to skin care. And so this was a very amazing methodology being tested in the NICU and brought by her, her, her friend. So she said, why don't you come up? I'll have you meet her, so on and so forth. It led me to this woman who helped me get connected with other people. And I graduated. They mentioned me at graduation and they said, you know, because of women like Charmin who are not afraid to pursue something new, we hope that someday holistic nursing is it's commonplace um, at schools. And it is, as you know, in medical schools. So nurses and doctors all learn about holistic nursing now. It's part of every say, like training um, program. curriculum. Yeah, yeah, right. So that was really huge for me. Um, but again, when you take a step towards yourself, the universe always conspires to help you. So you can see the momentum there as I took a step and pursued it, that these opportunities lined up. And I always followed that momentum. After I graduated, before I even got my degree, they asked me to speak at a conference for or not my degree. I had received my degree. I hadn't passed my boards yet. Mm. And they asked me to speak to 500 nurses. I was just a kid wow. on the power of human touch. And these people are people who are, quote unquote, seasoned ahead of you in the game? Nurses. Yeah. Oh, these are seasoned nurses. Yeah. And these you know, are, yeah. nurses and teachers, I think, have something in common yeah. in that they like to know, they like to be the expert. They don't necessarily want to have somebody come in and tell them something different. Is that true for yeah. nurses? Yeah, yeah, very true. That can be true. Very for true. Too. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so I spoke to these nurses on the power of human touch, connectivity, how important that was to emotional healing while you are physically healing. Mm -hmm. And so that's how that went. So flash forward, I had children, I stopped working and I lost myself. Moms mm -hmm. often do. Yes. Right. So I remember saying to my husband, I really need to find myself again, figure out what lights me up because I, you know, I love being a mom, but a purpose driven life is not about that. There's, there's gotta be something that is innate in me, right? creative to me, that is personal to me that you should always incorporate, you know, that kind of feeds the well so that you always can keep giving. Cause I love, I mean, it fueled me to be a mama, but there's that identity piece. Like who am I really at the core of all this? What is my truth? Who am I? when I dig deep. And I remember I felt most like myself in school. And that's when I did yoga. So that is, um, I thought, well, maybe when I do yoga again, if I start that, uh, you know, I'll get my peace of mind, mind, body balance. That's good. I'll reclaim that sort of peace. But as a mom, I knew I needed a big goal. So I said, well, sign up to be a yoga teacher and that will keep you accountable. Mm -hmm. And that will, you know, keep you on it. Otherwise I'll stop going. The kids will have a need ahead of mine. Totally. So I did that, became a yoga teacher. And quite honestly, I think from the first class, people were saying to me, what were you saying in class? Because I was crying or mm -hmm. I, could we go to coffee? Because whatever you just said really kind of stirred me. I thought maybe I could talk to you a little bit more. Coffee became a regular thing. My classes kept going to coffee, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I was like, what is happening? And eventually I realized, again, the universe was organically kind of showing me this 
mm-hmm. how, how it could unravel and fold. And, and, you know, so I thought, okay, so they like what I'm saying. And I've got this psychology background because it's psychology too. That was my minor. And so perhaps there's something to this. So I became a life coach. I got certified as a life coach and incorporated that in my yoga classes mm-hmm. as I was building my, my coaching career. And quite quickly that over, you know, that was, um, I was doing better with my coaching career financially than I could ever do with yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so that sort of is, is I still teach, I still do personal yoga. Um, I do corporate yoga. I teach at the brewery, which my husband Mm -hmm. owns is yeah. And yeah, but my coaching career kind of became the thing. I mean, you have to make choices. You can't have your hand in a hundred hats at the same time. Right. Um, what I skipped over is, is that I started in my own studio too. Um, and I started that when we moved and it allowed me a space to really create this personal development center. And I was offering, um, peace camps for young girls, broga for young boys. And this is where you would do confidence training and learn about the, the power of friendship and, um, and being honest and following your purpose and figuring out what lights you up. And, and we'd even do you know, interviews, false, you know, pretend interviews and handshaking and eye contact and, and the power of your voice and, and to stand tall and, and, you know, some of the power poses Mm -hmm. and, and teaching children some of these small things, the power of breathing to slow down and reset stress, you know, how to handle your stress and difficult emotions. So vision boards, journaling, all these things. So that was great. We would do workshops with women um, where we would tackle all kinds of topics that come up. Um, and we would sometimes watch movies and discuss them because there's a lot of incredible movies, you know, that sort of help you shift the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of creative ways to get together, obviously wine nights, things like that, making it fun and making it a place where like-minded women can come and share ideas and be safe doing and be safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so all of that, is part of what happens at home. Yeah. Which is the name of your business, Home. Home, yes. Because it's within my home. So we yes. have, we purchased this house that was too big for us. And my mother said, Charmin, why don't you, why don't you have that be your yoga studio? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's, that's crazy talk. And I went to bed that night and the floor in my studio um, is actually heated. And I thought, wait a minute, it's this beautiful space, built-in bench for storage, for mats, et cetera. There are several living rooms in the home. We don't need this one. It has its own entrance. And sure enough, it was. And, and the name came to me at that moment, too. That Because really, home is, is within all of us. Our truth, our purpose is there. It's always there. And to find it, sometimes you gotta go, you got to go on that journey. What I, love about, yeah. so, what I love about your story and what I want people to hear yeah. that you, you started in a place where a lot of people stop, right? Like you started, I want to be a nurse. And then somebody maybe threw down a roadblock and said, well, nobody's a holistic nurse. That's going to be hard. Yes. And in every time you, in every iteration of your personal and professional growth, maybe somebody threw down a, a roadblock. 100%. Kids, you know, life gets lifey. But what I love is that you keep dwelling in what's possible versus this is the way I should do it. So you don't should all over yourself. You're not like, no, 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 I'm a nurse. I'm going to stay a nurse for my 35 years and then I'm going to retire from this hospital. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, If that's what lights you up. And that is the key difference. Yeah. What is is it that lights you up? And for you, it's a constant evolving that lights you up. You know how they say, you know, you'll fail 100% of the time if you never try. Yeah. For some reason, that has always burned very brightly within me. I mm-hmm. always knew that you just try, you know, go meet somebody, just try, go do this, just try. Like the try part was exciting to me. And I will tell you my first job, there were not a lot of holistic nurses out there. And I opened up the phone book, Jen, and I literally called. I was living in Boston with Paul. The phone book. That just I tells literally, us how long isn't that hysterical? Right? <laughs> and I called whatever there was, maybe 50 places at the time in Boston, and I just cold called that I was a nurse. And was there any, you know, were they hiring? Um, could I come in and meet them? And ironically, again, universe shining down on me. So this one number I called, didn't know even where I was calling, only saw the name. You know, you don't know anything about it in the phone book. 
And um, I called and Dr. Rothfeld answered. He was at American Whole Health. I knew nothing of this man. Um, turns out he never answers the phone. Why he did on this day, we don't know. But he's a renowned doctor from Tufts. He's written many books. He answered the phone and there I am. Right, swimming in possibility, yes. giving my pitch that I had already given probably thirty-five times, mm-hmm. and uh, that I'm a you nurse. Sure had a lot of practice. You were ready for him, right? I was ready, and he was. And I just said, if there's, um, if I could even just, be, you know, work volunteer, if I could just meet you, if I could just come in, and he was kind of, he liked the passion behind my voice, mm-hmm. and he got kind of a kick out of it, and he said, why don't you come in? So I did, and as I was sitting there, Jen, in the waiting room not knowing where I was, literally this, I was oblivious. Above me was a self magazine cover. Mm-hmm. They were featured as the office of the future. Oh, wow. Here I was, I had no idea. He could have been Joe Schmo. <laughs> right. right? I, I, yeah. So here he is, the office of the future. It was where Eastern and Western medicine oh. were um, given under the same roof, basically, Boom. right? So you could come in for your prep culture. You could go in for your chiropractic visit. I was the IV nurse there. I gave vitamin infusions mm. and chelation, and it was amazing. And um, But think, that opportunity, if I had gone on job listings, it wouldn't have been there. But sometimes you have to just, you go outside the box and you think, you know, what will it take to make something possible. Yes. And it's going to be no if you don't try. It doesn't mean it's going to be a yes, but it might lead you to that next right step. Mm -hmm. So You got like 39 no's in your 40th. Oh, yes, yes. girl. I did. I got a ton of no's. And I remember Paul was cracking up like, what are you doing? (laughs) And I was like, why not? Right? Right. Maybe you meet, you network somebody that helps you in your path. Yeah. So when you tell your story, it unfolds organically. It's obvious like you're, you're dwelling in possibility a lot. And at the same time, I know that somebody watching this or listening to this is thinking, oh, but that's for her. She's yeah. special. Can nope. you talk a little bit about the dark thoughts that maybe would have gotten in your way and how you and dealt them, with them? And they're there and they are there for you. Mm-hmm. And they always should guide you. See, fear is going to challenge you. It's going to try and take you out. It will happen every single time. Mm-hmm. My radio show, I thought my whole life, that's what, I literally bought red glasses when I was like 10 because I wanted to be Sally Jesse. Like I really <laughs> thought that was my path. So here's the, the speaking and the coaching and all of it. I'm like, clearly this is leaning me to take this to a bigger platform. Mm-hmm. And one day I was on Facebook and a, a, like a, an app, advertisement had come up for a radio show. I wrote it on my phone. I opened it up. I saw the application. I wrote my pitch on my phone without questioning it because sometimes I I know well enough my ego will talk me out. But if I stay in that moment of possibility, so what? They say no. Then I, so what? But I could try, right? So that just go for it. That action step can Mm -hmm. be very exhilarating. Mm -hmm. It's okay if they say no. It might lead to something else. Um, So I wrote the pitch. I sent it in. I remember I went to girlfriend, uh, girlfriend, I went to dinner with my girlfriends that night. And while I was sitting at dinner, the CEO wrote me back and she said, I just read your pitch and I would love to meet with you. Wow. Um, so that's how that happened. They said yes to the radio show. I'm getting feeling great vibes. I'm like, yes. And then the darkness came in. The fear came in. Uh-huh. I signed contracts. I was in, this was happening. And Jen, the fear of being seen is powerful. Can you talk a little bit about that? What well, that means? Yes, because I can because that is that takes us out is is showing up as yourself. It is much easier to have dreams and use excuses and never pursue them, right? It's not the right time. I'm too busy. I have this other stable job. But really, it's going out there and it's exposing yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you're not so riding vulnerable. anyone's curtails anymore. There is no security. It is frightening. It is scary. It is terrifying. And people while might not like you. People might not like oh, you. Oh, they're not. Say. And guess what? That I'm a Libra. I'm a lover. I want to have a million friends. <laughs> but as I turned 40, I realized you cannot need everyone to like you. Okay. You can like people to like you but you have to be okay with them not liking you. Mm-hmm. You have to be with that feeling and say that is about them because how somebody t- treats you is always about them. Mm. It is never about you. 
So when you're having an interaction and someone's rubbed up against you and they don't give you a good vibe, that's about them. There's nothing more freeing than that. You got to be okay with them not liking you. That is yes. like, that is not on me to fix. That is not my problem no. to solve. That is on no. them. No. And you can't put all your energy in this one person that doesn't like you, right? Because it can, it's exhausting and it's a total waste of your time because mm-hmm. sometimes no matter how loving, funny, great, balanced you are, you're, you're not enough for that person. I know. And that's a good lesson. When you stop trying to put your eggs in the wrong basket and you continually put them in the right basket, Mm -hmm. that basket gives back. That basket fuels you and feeds you. It will not drain you. So right. you've, all, you've learned all these lessons the hard way, I imagine. Hell yes. <laughs> oh, isn't that the best? Like wisdom, right? This is why, you know, we have to sh- share as women what we've learned. Mm-hmm. So the dark night came in or the dark feelings came in around my radio show. Mm-hmm. I started being very worried that I, I, I'm like an imposter, right? And I think imposter syndrome is another problem that we all have. I'm not smart enough. I'm not witty enough. Trained enough. Not, I don't have enough certifications. Enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we, ha- we all do this. And we look at the other person who is far more qualified. And why? How did I, I? This was luck. I got here by luck. This was chance. Yes. And oh, shit, I cannot deliver now. Right. I right. I'm, really, this is it. Like I, this is, I, so, so get out now. Mm-hmm. And I literally called the producers and I said, Mm-mm, this is, I can't, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And they were like, Charmin, you literally were so impassioned about your Sally, Jesse, Raphael glasses <laughs> and how all this sort of organically unfolded and how your conversations with women um, fuel you and how they always seem to leave more empowered. And isn't this gift you should be sharing? Mm. This is just your fear. The same advice I give my coaching clients, right? But it yeah. falls on deaf ears when it's yourself. Of course. And I had acid in my stomach and I was like, oh, I hate that they're right. I know that they're right. I'm not sure where I'm going to find the strength to just keep putting one foot in front of the other, but they're not letting me quit. Mm. So it's happening. So I prayed. I believe in praying. I prayed all over it. And I remember the night before the show, I wasn't afraid. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it went, Jen, but literally I walked through the fear. Mm -hmm. And man, is that the coolest, most empowering, badass, fucking warrior feeling there is on the planet. And I didn't plan for it. I didn't know it would happen, but I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And the night before the show, All I felt was elation. All I felt was excitement. And I put my headphones on for the first show. And I was like, literally like shaking with excitement. Mm -hmm. And we broke a record for the number of listeners for a new show. Wow. Yep. So the whole thing here, the lesson, first of all, there's there's the lesson of, it's a, it's a yogic lesson of lean into the discomfort, oh, you know, allow yeah. the feeling uh-huh. and you allowed the fear. There's that resistance that a lot of us do where we buffer and we push it down oh, and we but. squash it. And then it comes, comes up someplace else. It but will you, come up, Jen. Lean into it. it. Uh, yes. See, cause you have to look at what's coming up. You have to feel it. Mm-hmm. We all think, and most of us are so outwardly focused yes. and when we're busy, we can't feel. Mm-mm. Right. So we do, 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 do. And we task, task, task. Yes. But these things come up and when you feel it and you go through it, you go beyond it. Mm-hmm. It's like, thank you. Next. What, what's I think next? a lot of, I think a lot of my clients and I talk about my, my thing is like, we can't ever achieve our goals because we keep ourselves too busy and we don't, we can't clear out our minds because we keep ourselves so busy yeah. and people stay busy so that they don't have to do exactly what you did. People want what you have. They have to sit and be in it. And many, many, many people are not willing to do that. And you know, Jen, I would have walked away if they let me. Yeah. That, that I, I had that much fear, mm-hmm. that much doubt that I could deliver. I mean, other, I was drowning in it. The other thing that you spoke about was being at the mic that first day and like, like vibing with oh, excitement. I can feel it now. Mm-hmm. The thing is sometimes fear, well, fear and excitement they feel the feel same, the same yes, in they your do. body. Yes, they and do. So if you can talk your mind off the ledge of this is fear and be like, oh, this is exciting. That is a huge following yeah. mindset shift for people. So, you know, m- my whole career... Uh, 
shifted a lot for me. I have never been really religious. Mm-hmm. I'm still not but I'm very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're kind of, as a culture, having a spiritual awakening, right? Mm -hmm. I think things are really shifting in that direction. And I love that. As a life coach, unexpectedly, well, even before I became a life coach, this is part of my path, Mm -hmm. we had a friend pass away unexpectedly. And it was, he was 40 and he was perfectly healthy. and, And then he had a catastrophic heart attack. And what that told me was, we never know how long we're going to have. You have to live right now. And literally, sitting, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm going to show you. And this was 2010. I went out. Can you see this? Mm-hmm. I went out and I bought this sign. Is it backwards now for you? No, no, it's, it, no it can be. It's, yeah. So live. I went out to Marshall's. I bought this sign in homage to him. And I said, I will live every day fully. Mm-hmm. Right? seeking a purpose-driven life. Like for my children, my, uh, you know, not everyone's a mother, but those of us that are know that they are going to emulate you. Sure. And I have three daughters. They're more likely going to emulate me than they are their dad. Their, their, their dad is amazing and has taught them and will continue to teach them amazing things. But there's that mother, daughter, they're mm-hmm. looking to see how am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And there was a time where I said I lost myself. And I think that happens to every mother. And I thought, And that's when Dave passed, by the way. The correlation there is that's when Dave passed. And I said to myself, they're going to copy me. And while I think they'll make great moms, do I want them to feel lost and moms, right? No. So I need to reclaim my sense of self so that they see mom can be a mom and have this purpose-driven life, like really define who she is and what lights her up so that they always do that. Right. So because, you know, that changed the course of, of, of my path. <laughs> I'm wondering how all of this has brought you to work with, you know, adults and women make sense, right? Yeah. But, but you're also now working with teens and uh-huh. children. And yeah. can you talk a little bit about the connection that yeah. you're, you're, why connecting is so important with teens and children specifically? Mm-hmm. Well, our tools is really, I mean, our whole life, we start to develop our tool chest. And if we've never learned how to deal with stress and difficult emotions, we really always fumble. And we know plenty of adults who are still fumbling. Uh, Myself, I still fumble. We're human. But the more tools you have in your tool chest, the better equipped you are to deal with what life throws you, Mm -hmm. right? So... So, so really that's why I knew young girls were, were who I wanted to have a a, a program for Mm -hmm. specifically. I mean, I was a yoga teacher. So watching little ones do yoga is so sweet. They know how to quiet their minds and they find that stillness. And it looks like they've, they've just received the greatest gift at all. Like they, you know, the inner joy is so easy for them to tap. Mm -hmm. But talking about difficult friendships and talking about how you deal with conflict and talking about stress and talking about all those things, not everyone, I mean, I'm a talker as a mom. My mother was, but not every child goes home to somebody who's listening or knows even how to address those things. So I thought how important that is to have those those girls here. I did feel that teenagers would be the population I couldn't work with because they're sort of, you know, they're too cool. And yes. I always did yoga with them. I always, I, I always did this thing called share the gift of yoga where um, you'd come and bring your child for free of mm-hmm. all ages. And it ended up being mostly teenagers, which I loved. And a lot of the concepts I always, you know, through my class, I would talk them, you know, and it's great to expose them. But a workshop, I wasn't sure that they would be a captive audience. Totally. I ruled it out. Mm. Um, so I did the boys, the broga class, mm-hmm. and I did the young girls and but the teenagers I avoided. And then my, my high school daughter, her soccer coach on the varsity soccer team said, Charmin, I heard you're a life coach and I would like to know if you would be willing to come to my house. I'll do a spaghetti dinner and I would like you to give them a talk. And I was like, sure, I would mm-hmm. love to do that. And from that spun the most unexpected outcome. I was receiving texts from them oh, wow. after the fact. I was getting mom saying my daughter came home and had such a profound reaction to your words. Could you work with her one-on-one? Oh, wow. And I never saw that coming. Mm-hmm. So that led to this one, referrals, right? I mean, when someone has had good, so then they would tell somebody sure. and then I'd get a new teenager. And then what I realized is they need it more than any of the other groups I've worked with. I think teenagers now connectivity 
yes. to bring this full circle. Never has there been a time in society that we are as disconnected as we are right now. Ironically, right? Because we have yeah. access to everything and we, we are more disconnected, right? We are. Okay. And we're tethered to our phones mm-hmm. and we're constantly looking outward. And the problem with that is the real happiness has to begin with an inward focus, really who you are and what lights you up. But they're so, you know, getting these superficial hits of likes and critiques and whatever. You are taking in all that input and you are measuring who you are against other people. And that's really a dangerous, slippery, slippery slope. It's negative, toxic, and, and it's very isolating. Mm-hmm. That not enough feeling mm-hmm. is kind of, you know, planted. And... Yeah, connectivity. We used to pick up the phone and the intonation in someone's voice. You know, it was, you could pick up on emotion. It's misread in texts, right? So even breaking up with somebody, do you remember you how hard that was? But you had to do it, right? In person, in or person over the phone, at least. Or on a phone, but you voice really to find voice. The words. And there's a skill in that. Yeah. And it, you, you really fumble at first and, and you know, you're always going to fumble a little, but you get better like that tool chest, right? Yeah. You send a text, it's not working. Send, what have you learned? Right. Nothing, you, right. you know? So there's so much, even just there in our communication with each other that is missed. So listening to somebody, you can't mm-hmm. listen on a text, but when someone's sitting there holding space for you, supporting you. That's a powerful thing to share with a friend. So, so there's that. There's sex, drugs, and, you know, mm-hmm. everything else that it's, you know, because porn is so accessible, let's just be honest. Yeah, yeah. Kids are confused. Yes. It's um, their, their images for their bodies and what's normal mm-hmm. is so skewed. It's unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So they're it's and and drugs of course like so we've got access to that harder drugs than kids ever had before oh my god uh, yes. it's harder now yes. stronger now than it ever was before vaping my middle daughter anna last year eighth grade said mom i think everybody vapes oh my god she, she said you know you think yeah, that normally it's, uh, you know, the, the, the smart kids, the, the cool kids, the whatever, are not the ones that do it. It's kind of like more of the burnout kids, mm. but she said, mom, it's everyone. Mm. So, you know, I mean, and then it's just, yeah. So d- th- when you realize, and suicide, oh, yeah. suicide, the rates of suicide have increased exponentially. Mm-hmm. Why? Connectivity. Connectivity, right. We need to be connected. We're working more as a society. Oh my God, we're so materialistic. We are so driven. We got to go, go, go. We got to be better than the Joneses. We got to acquire, acquire, acquire. We're not connecting to our loved ones. We're not connecting to ourselves. Yeah. You know, families are detached and f- you need family time. These teenagers who come to me have homes most often where one or the other parent, if not both, are never around. Mm-hmm. Kids need that connection. We need that connection. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, connectivity, teens, it happened. It's at the basis for... It just happened. It's at the basis of their success. It's at the basis of our success for ourselves, for for our marriages, for our relationships, for for our businesses. Like, we really need to connect with ourselves and with other people. So, given all of that foundation, what would you... What advice would you give to a woman Mm -hmm. who has, has yet to really connect with herself. Mm. Where, how could she start someplace? Well, I always go back to what did you like as a child? What lit you up Mm -hmm. before the world told you who you were? Who were you? So, yeah, I mean, you really begin there. Did you like nature? Were you an adventurer? Did you music? Did you like to dance? You know, what lit you up? And sort of find your way back to your creative self. Your creative self is really what's going to drive that purpose. It's the unique part of you. Where your interests lie are, is, is part of your purpose. Yeah. So you have to go back because sometimes we get stuck in this box of, well, I need to be a lawyer. You know, <laughs> like yep. maybe that will pay the bills, but maybe that's not what lights you up. And that's okay. Pay those bills. Do the job you have, but incorporate what lights you up. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe you start taking that guitar lesson and maybe, you know, you start taking that painting class and maybe you start writing that book you always dreamt about. Maybe you start traveling and journaling about it because when you take a step towards yourself, your true self, who you are at home, Mm -hmm. then the world will conspire to help you. Absolutely. So... These opportunities were no accident in my life. I was really sitting in my purpose and in my truth. And when that happens, opportunity opens itself up. But you have to be quiet, right? You have to be quiet to allow that to happen, right? So much. Because when, for example, you're running late for work and, you know, you spill the coffee on your way out and, you know, you're panting because we all shallow breathe when we're stressed out. (sighs) Oh my God, I'm going to be late. I've got this meeting and oh my God, I just spilled on my pants and oh my God. And then you can't find your keys and you're like frantic and you're like, oh my God. And what do we all do? (sighs) Slow down, slow down. I cannot find my keys unless I slow down. Mm -hmm. And then you stop and you literally stop, don't we? And we say like, okay, oh yeah, that's right. I was in my bedroom, and I, but you have to stop. Of course. So we cannot hear our intuition, mm-hmm. our inner guidance, unless we stop and slow down. Mm-hmm. So really, when we, I mean, being alone is addictive. When you start to be alone with yourself, you realize it is so good. Sometimes it gets hard to be with people. That's true, yes. Yes. But it takes time, and it is a skill. It's one more toolbox. But mm-hmm. to really be alone with yourself is to stop and say, what do I like? Moms, especially, again, so outwardly focused on everyone's needs. Mm-hmm. We're the I'll first ask, to go without. I'll ask a woman, what do you want? She, no. she often doesn't know the answer. No, they have. It, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a judgmental comment that I'm making. No, she no, she's no. just so focused on taking care of everyone else. Well, that's where I was. You know, when my friend passed away and it yeah. was like, I, I knew I needed to seize the opportunity, the moment, make something good happen out of this terrible tragedy. And I knew that it was a call to live, but I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I needed. And I did have to sit with my thoughts. When did I feel most like myself? Mm -hmm. And I recalled that feeling of joy, of peace when I did yoga. So I was like, hey, I'm not sure this is it, but I'm going to take a step and try that. And if that's not it, I'll keep looking, right? Yeah. And, and so that's how it is. But you got to get quiet. You really have to sit and say, what do I like to do? Mm-hmm. It, is it just walks? Is it just, you know, um, being in nature? Is it spending more time with my family? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. There's no right answer. Right. But when you discover what literally makes you happy, because we never ask ourselves. I know, I know. And it keeps us just stuck. And then that leads to, well, the kids graduate from school and here I am. Now, now who am I, right? Uh, I'll just, you know, yeah. or I had a creative idea and I didn't act on it. And somebody, somebody down the street is doing the same thing I wanted to do. So there's two things there. Mm-hmm. One, don't put it off. Yeah. We do that, don't we? Mm-hmm. When the kids graduate, I just got to get, them here and oh I'll I I'll fix my edge after you know um, we move because it's already enough stress right now I can't even deal with it mm-hmm. I just will live on autopilot in this you know broken down marriage <laughs> yep. or I can't mm-hmm. deal with this family drama right now I'm just going to pretend that everything's okay and I'll deal with it later yes. the truth is what sits within your soul is weighing you down the longer you carry something the heavier it feels and it will I often catch use, up Yes, girl. I often use the example of when you pack a suitcase to go on a trip, Mm -hmm. you know, you pack it specific to the needs of that vacation. So if it's Caribbean, it's sandals and bathing suits, et cetera. And imagine you came home from that trip and I said to you, I hope you had a great time. Um, We're going to go on another trip. The good news is it's an entirely different place. It's Alaska. Mm -hmm. So you need to pack a suitcase specifically for that. But here's the bad news. You cannot unpack your bathing suits from the Caribbean. I need you to bring them along also. No problem. You have two hands. You can do that, right? When you return, I say, I hope you had a lovely time. I have good news and bad news. We're going on another trip. This time it's Africa, right? So I need you to pack your binoculars and your safari gear. The bad news is I need you to bring your other two suitcases. Mm -hmm. Well, you're creative. You know you can carry a backpack and it's not a problem. It's (laughs) cumbersome, but you go, right? It's a free vacation and it's it's different and it's, it's something to do. So you do it. 
When you return, you can imagine the story goes, there's a fourth trip. I don't know how many you will personally mm. get in, how creative you will get, but eventually, if you are carrying everything with you, you will be rendered immobile. Mm-hmm. You will not be able to move forward. It'll be too heavy. It'll be too much. It is time to unpack that shit. Mm-hmm. I've literally never yeah. heard that metaphor before, but it's perfect and I love it. Because you carry yeah. it around for a while and then you won't be able to. And it's just such a be- that's a beautiful metaphor. Yeah, picture it, right? At first it's you're like, so I got good. this. I can still carry it. Yeah. But eventually you're like, I'm not going anywhere. This sucks. That's right. It's too heavy. That's right. It's not worth it. Charmin, you have given us so much useful. This was like a great life coach session that you just yeah, did. Girl. It was so wonderful. Well, How- together, we worked <laughs> off each other and that's, I knew it would happen that way. How can people follow you, listen to you, be in touch with you, work with you? Yes, absolutely. So I have a website. Go visit me at the website. Mm-hmm. Um, the address is charminhome.com. Okay. S-E- a R M I N H O M E dot com. Okay. Um, you can call me 617 429 0661. I do a free 30 minute trial session. So mm-hmm. you can kind of feel what a session feels like. Typically, sessions are one to five sessions, but some people do much more and some people they've not. And that's it's you can decide what you need. But see, that's the thing you do decide what you need. Mm-hmm. No one else can tell you. Right? Right, right? Power is in you. And you are the angel that will save yourself. It's not going to be anybody else. Right. It's action. You know, yeah. th- what you just said is important for people to know when they're working with a coach. Um, a good coach is going to help you discover what's in yourself. They're not going to should all over you uh-huh. or, you know, tell you what to do. It's really about, it's like holding space, holding a mirror for people, asking really great questions. And I think a lot of people are afraid of coaching. It's yeah. a different model than therapy. And they need to know that, you know, the, the, the work is work that you have to do. I'm not, as a coach, you and I are not doing the heavy lifting. They have to do the heavy lifting. When yep. people get to the other side of coaching, they'll often say, you did this for me, or yeah. no, I didn't. I just asked a good question and gave you the space to get quiet, to think about what you wanted. So I, I want love, people to know that when you, when you work with someone, they fundamentally change. They, oh. they, yeah. Their lives transform, and it's them doing the work. It's, we are always always within us is the person we are meant to be. Mm -hmm. It's never gone. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't take a leave of absence. It is there within each of us at this very moment. It is not hard to find it either. Honestly, how often do women sit there and say, what makes me happy? That simple question can open many doors pretty quickly. And then when you take a step towards it, it leads to the next right step, Absolutely. right? So a couple of things in a relationship, we're talking about connectivity. Mm -hmm. In a relationship, there's two people. When one stops working, the relationship will crumble. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And that is because no matter how much the other person is trying or working or trying to salvage the relationship, it's not enough. If the, uh, you cannot carry the weight of two people. Forever. You can't, you can't do it forever. You might be able to do it for a little while, but it doesn't work forever. No, but right. the interesting thing, and we know this about relationships, or sometimes we don't know this and, and, pay, and clients need to understand, right? Because they think, but I'm loving him so much and he doesn't love me. Well, how's he doing? Or yeah. how is she doing? You know, it takes two. But what I think is really more critical and more fundamental is the relationship with yourself. Mm-hmm. You cannot go on autopilot and have a happy, joyful life. I totally agree. That's why I wanted to have this conversation with you so that they could hear it, so people could hear it from somebody who's far more experienced than I am and has a big reach and is doing this work and it just channels through you. I want people to see that like even just listening to you makes people feel better. Even just hearing the words that you have to say, they get in there. And that's those, those seeds that you plant are so vital. So I want people to be able to connect with you. Do you have social media that people can follow you on? I do, but I'm not super active um, mm-hmm. on social media. The truth is, Jen, again, the power of referrals. Yes. I don't, I don't do a lot to build my practice mm-hmm. because... I only try to have five clients at a time. Mm -hmm. The reason why is I really like to have full 
uh, almost like your children, right? You want to love them unconditionally and you really want to see them transform. Right. So sometimes like I've had this one client, it's over a year now that we're, so I've only had four spots Mm -hmm. in rotation. Right. So, right. So that it's, so I don't really promote it Mm -hmm. until a spot is open and it's usually quickly filled. Yeah. Good for you. And I like that. Right. No. And I love that. And, and it's beautiful. So yeah, so that's it. So social media, I am on Facebook. I, I have Charmin home. It's on Facebook. Find Great. me on Facebook. Okay. And I am on Instagram as well. I'm not even sure my handle right now because I can hardly <laughs> use it. I am not a huge fan Good of social you. media. Good for you. I'm not. And I know that that's where we're at. Sometimes, and I will say this too, we have to be so careful to stay on our own mat. Yes. I have so many talented friends in this field that are doing such great things in the world. And it can be intimidating to see somebody's trajectory if totally. they feel like they're surpassing me or doing it in a new and an interesting way. It can stir me up. So what I have found that is even though I love and respect the work that they're doing, I don't want to watch yeah, because I, I don't it. want to do it their way. I, I want it to do it my way that feels right to me. And I think this is advice that really, really applies to no matter what work it is that you do. Mm-hmm. Try not to look at the other ways that people did it. Figure out what, how do you like to connect with people? Right. What results are you looking for? Mm-hmm. What is this, a step that you can take today that is towards that? Right. Which brings you back to connecting with yourself, not the compare and despair mentality, but what do I want? How do I I want my business to look look at how people run their businesses? Mm -hmm. It, 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 to me, it does me a disservice. It muddies your waters. I get it. Yeah. I really get it. I try not. And I try to support by like liking and stuff, but I don't want to watch because I don't want to replicate their way. I need it to be my way. I love that. If I'm always dialed in, then I'm always following my intuition. Mm -hmm. Right. And that will never steer me wrong. I love it. Thank you, Sharman. This is such good stuff. So Yay. helpful. Yay. I appreciate good. your time today and, oh, and you. all of your wisdom. And yes. Oh, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. Absolute this gold. This is Thank what we you. do. What did you just say? I said it's absolute gold. Thank oh, you. Oh, right back at you. Girl, we are <laughs> one in the same. We're doing the same work in the world. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, we, women, it's, it's, it's this is our time. Mm-hmm. Our rising. People need it. People need to be supported. Yep. Women are rising and women, mm-hmm. strong women know that we rise together. together. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Well, thank you, Charmin. I appreciate thank it you, so love. much. Mm-hmm. 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 Bye. Okay. Bye. The thing that I love about Charmin is that she is living on purpose. She tunes in and asks herself what she needs on a consistent basis. She shows up in connection with herself. Now, when you're living in that kind of integrity, the universe lines up to make things happen for you. You just have to start to notice. Are you listening to what you need? Are you asking yourself what you want? Tune into yourself. That's how you're going to achieve your goals. Remember that you can have what you want. And when you believe that, when you tune into it and you take the first step toward it, watch what shows up for you. If you've tuned in already and know what you want, but you're tired of doing it alone, reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. And it's why I created my Idea Space program, which is an online coaching program to help women go from idea to reality. It's time to overcome isolation and connect with other creative women just like you. Find me at my website, www.jenliddy.com, and let's talk about whether it's a good fit for you. If you're tired of living in isolation and confusion, then reach out. It's time to connect. See you next week when I'm teaching more about how to overcome the isolation and take action with some specific steps. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time 
by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.